Oh, you had calls out there. How are you doing? It's Russ here from Porky's Corner. Biggest gob in sport. Right. A lot's been going on lately, so... We've got an assistant now who's going to read all the questions out of me. So she's called Laura, so fire away, Laura. Lomachenko. Lomachenko. Lomachenko, in my opinion, it could have gone either way, that fight. He gets too many early rounds away. But he's knocking on a bit now, Loma. And we'll see how three defeats already. He could be coming to end now, so Devin Haney timed it right, in my opinion. You see, boxing's all about timing. When you've got two top guys going at it, it's usually, there's usually one of them that's always a favourite, and one of them that's on the slide. They're never really at the peaks, like we should have had with Riddick Bowen and Lennox Lewis, and, you know, Ali and Fraser. We never really got that with Fraser Ali, he did with the first time because Ali was three and a half years out of the ring. And I think Devin Haney just timed it right. I think a peak Loma beats the peak Devin Haney, but I think Devin Haney is up and coming. And I think that Lomachenko, he's a bit like Josh Warrington. He's climbed mountain and he's on his way down now. But it was a good fight and I'd like to see it again. I didn't like to see Lomachenko upset afterwards, but uh, I'd like to see it again. Do we want to see Katie Taylor and Chantel again? I'd like to see uh, Katie Taylor and Chantel again, Chantel Cameron again, but why, why though? Why were there a rematch if uh, Katie Taylor lost? Why a rematch? Why? Why is that? Why does she get a rematch? She won the champion. It was Chantel's belt. So that means if they fight again and she snicks a, a win on points, which I don't think she does, I think she gets stopped, but if she nicks a win on points, that means they're going to go down the route of a trilogy. And we're all really wanting to see a second fight, aren't we? Because the first fight was so conclusive that you don't need a second fight. It's a bit like Carl Frotch against Lucian Bute, isn't it? There were a rematch for the second one, weren't there? But we didn't need to see it. Terry Harper against Boone Gardner. There were a rematch clause, weren't there? But Terry Harper's still up there on planet orbit. She don't want the rematch. And we don't need to see that rematch, do we? So, do we want to see, really, Katie Taylor, Chantel Cameron again? No. What we want to see is Chantel Cameron get paid, don't we? But it doesn't warrant another rematch, in my opinion, so no. Middleweight and heavyweight. Middleweight and heavyweight. At the moment, the middleweight, heavyweight, the middleweight and the heavyweight are parked up. So, we'll get to that further down line. So. Lomachenko going up in weight. Lomachenko going up in weight, right. Fighters, as, I, as I've always said, for the last five, six years, fighters are not superheroes. People get behind these fighters, they think they can do this, they think they can do that. There's no substitute for weight. That's why we have weight classes. A 10 stone man is not going to beat a 16 stone man, is it? No matter how skilled they are, he's going to get bullied. Chantel Cameron's a bigger person than Katie Taylor, she got bullied. Lomachenko uh, can only go so far putting weight on Carney. Technically, he's unbeatable at a lesser weight, but going up through the weights, you get found out, don't you? Canelo got found out, everybody thought he was Superman. Eddie Hills going on about, oh, he'll go up to cruiserweight and then heavyweight. Well, he got found out at light heavyweight, didn't he? So, and this is a man that started his career as a welterweight. We have weight divisions for a reason. Don't keep putting fighters through all this. You've just seen what's happened to Chris Eubank Jr. His body was decimated. When he got in ring with Beefy, he got punched upside down and put on planet Saturn. So don't mess about with fighters' weights. Get them fighting at a proper weight. Let's have same day weigh-ins. So it's going up and down in weight's a good thing then? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think it is now. Weight class is there for a reason. So do we give them respect for rolling the dice? Yeah, we give him respect for all of the dice, but there's got to be some middle ground. John Fury puts it on John Virgo. Well, somebody told me Big John Fury from Fury Power. Let's put it on John Virgo. It's some bloke called Virgo in it. Oh my God, what's going on? <laughs> AJ Fury. AJ Fury. Does AJ Fury happen? 
<laughs> is AJ going to fight anybody with a heartbeat? Because at the moment, he's in a situation where if he fights somebody hovering around the top 15, top 20, he could get beat and then he's finished. Or, if he fights Wilder or Fury, he will get finished. So they're in a, Eddie Earn and Joshua, they're in a, a, a catch-22 situation. Do they roll the dice and fight Wilder or Fury and get put on moon? Or do they take a lesser fight and get beat and then not get that big fight? Or have to get that big fight but for chump change. So they're in a really, really tight predicament and I'm glad because at the end of the day, the Brad Joshua in cotton wool is not really for anybody. His best wins, Vladimir, pushing 42 year old, 18 month on the settee after Fury schooled him. That's his best win, a life and death. That is it. That is the Anthony Joshua, aka Big Beach legacy. Next question. Wilder 3, gain of nightmares. Wilder 3, giving Fury nightmares. Yeah, I think it is giving Fury nightmares because. I don't think Tyson Fury wants to take a hard challenge on against a big punching man because he's been rocked to his boots, but he's got that big a heart and that big gojones, he's got up on it. But he doesn't want that wild of smoke again. He doesn't want that wild of smoke again. I don't think Tyson Fury wants any smoke again, to be honest. He's just talking a good game and the talk the sends now into a big hole at the other end of Calcutta. <laughs> They've dug it that deep. Smith and Beefy. Yeah. Smith and Beefy. Uh, I think Beefy by knockout, even quicker. Spence and Crawford. Spence and Crawford. Can you sit, can you go a bit closer to the microphone when you speak? Spence and Crawford. Uh, well, they keep saying this fight is gonna gonna be on, and it's been it's been now given four different dates in the last three years, so. I personally think it's slip service, but Crawford and Spence have nowhere to go. So either get on the train and get out of Dodge and retire or fight. Because we don't want to see you in. We're waste men. Alright? Mucker's win. Oh, Mucker's win. Oh. Kevin Zorse, Mucker won yesterday. Uh, I don't know what odds it was. 13 to 2 or something, I think they got. I did back it. I did back it. So, because it's a mugs game, isn't it? Gambling. But obviously, he's on an eye, in it, over it. Ah, I told you. Be like that, won't it? I told you. You didn't listen again. Well, I did back it when it was 40 to 1. So, I'm not going to back it now, am I? Because if I had backed it yesterday, it lost. So, no, I didn't back it. But good luck to him, he backed it fat and won prize money, didn't he? So, good luck to him. But no, I didn't back it. I think, I think the mid tumbler did though, so. With Eddie talking £135 rematch for Taylor and Chantel. Eddie's talking what? £135 rematch. £135 rematch? Let's have a look, what's that say there? Eddie, oh, right. Edit. Oh yeah, as you, as you. <laughs> yeah, what? I thought you were funny. Sorry, sorry, I'm not. I thought you, I thought you meant uh, 135 Matt Pan in, in uh, cash. Yeah, Eddie's talking about Chantel Cameron going down to uh, 100, 135 pound. What? From 140. I wonder where them glasses were. From 140. No, she's not going to do that. Is she? If Katie Taylor wants a rematch at 135, she's got to pay Chantel Cameron, hasn't she? Because that'll mean they want to fight at 135 and then do rubber match at 138. I mean, where are we heading with this? If they just fought at 140, does that mean he's going to drag Katie Taylor back down in weight again? Hey? Eh? Well, weight division's for a reason, isn't she filling out? Didn't Eddie say she's filling out? Well, now he's dragging her back down. Oh, Kel Brook. Kel Brook's filling out in weight. He's really a super middleweight. Kel's a beast. So they're making fights at 160 when he's at 147. Then they're boiling back down to 147. Oh, he's not a beast now. Because the narrative suits you. Stop messing with fighters with weights, Eddie. You tool. So now I want to see it at 140. Brook and Ben. Brook and Ben. Circus act, don't want to see it. Next question. <laughs> Warrington and Wed. 
Warrington and who? Ward, sorry. Ward. Yeah. Uh, if Lee Ward loses against Lara this weekend, the Warrington fight will still be there. If he wins against Lara, the Warrington fight is next. That's where they're going to go with them because they've got nowhere else to go then to. They need each other more than ever. A Coley fight. Who? A Coley fight. A Coley CBS. Chris Bill and Smith. Lawrence to Coley on points in a boar feast. Next question. Does Frank send many Christmas cards? Does who? <laughs> Spotty Frank. Does Spotty Frank get many Christmas cards? <laughs> uh, I don't know, but uh, I assume he gets one every year off Eddie Hills, his boyfriend. <laughs> Bellu calling Fury a tit. Bellu calling Fury a tit? Yeah, uh, well Tyson Fury has been behaving a bit daft really, so I'm going to have to agree with Tony the Belen Bellu on that one. White and AJ. White and AJ, do you want to see it? No, not really. It's two gatekeepers. They don't have a belt, Joshua and Dylan White. They do not have a belt. They're not in the top five, in my opinion. So what are they? Matchmakers say men that are not in the top five are basically gatekeepers. So the gatekeepers in a crossroads fight that shouldn't be pay-per-view. 